Welcome or welcome back. This is Pairs Well with Knitting. I'm Jennifer, and this is a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarn adventures, and travel. Thank you very much for joining me today, and I'm really excited to be sharing with you a traditional knitting podcast. We're talking finished objects, whips, acquisitions, and we have a sprinkling of things that I've been up to in Toronto, um, along with a treasure from the bookshelf. This is something that viewers which are so lovely. I've had so many comments and questions lately, um, have been very curious about what is in the bookshelf. This is behind me all the time and I joke you not, we have a very minimal home. However, the bookshelf is anything but, has a number of treasures. So what I'm going to be doing at some point of the video is pulling an item from the bookshelf, presenting it, and I might continue that with future episodes. So treasure from the bookshelf. Pressing on what I'm wearing. Today what I'm wearing is the Sonder Jumper. This is a gorgeous colorwork sweater that's designed by the Petite Knitter. She is a knitwear designer that lives in the very chilly Arctic of Canada and has a gorgeous aesthetic of neutrals and often uses unspun yarn. This sweater, however, was in collaboration with Sonder Yarn, which is a spun yarn, um, also Canadian from the founders of Espace Tricot. And she created this top down, beautiful color work sweater. Um, it has color work on, of course, the yoke. I've added color work on the sleeve just to add a little pizzazz. Uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the chart is not like this. I, uh, I was feverishly knitting and still re like relatively new into knitting and I did not follow the chart appropriately. So we have a funky little uh, one of a kind feature in this jumper if you've seen other Saunders and I've made a mock neck. Uh, for the neckline. I enjoy making a mock neck because I enjoy something cozy and tight to my neck. But in addition, if it doesn't work or the yoke isn't working out well, I always have the option of folding it down and securing it to give it a double neckline. It's a boxy fit, but still compared to a lot of the designers that I've been working off of patterns from different countries of Scandinavia, this is a still fitted boxy sweater. It, to me, it's a gorgeous fit. The yarn I used, uh, the cream and the black are both Hillsvog. The cream is a uh, sole um, and the black, I'm not 100% sure, but it matches the weight of the sole. I'll include it in my show notes. The story with this sweater is this was my Knit City sweater, Montreal. I attended my very first knitty event ever two years ago with a couple of friends, and this was on the needles going on the train to Montreal. I had had every hope of getting it totally done, of course, for the event, and I did not. So I ended up, um, I was almost done. I was up until like 3 a.m. crazy, and um, I had a bit of the sleeve to go. It was just so late. So I did a steam block at the time with like a hotel towel I had and an iron, and it worked well to simmer down and bloom the yarn. Gorgeous yarn, by the way. Um, and I had a ball still, the black um, Hillsbog yarn. So I stuck it in my sweater sleeve and attended Knit City Montreal. And while at Knit City, I spot another Saunder sweater and not just any Saunder sweater. The Saunder sweater happens to be on Tracy from the Grocery Girls, Tracy and Jody. I was losing my mind. We were both in our Saunder sweaters. Oh my goodness. These were the first knitting celebs I've ever had come across in my life. I was losing my mind. The stitches are so meaningful, have so much memory. This sweater absolutely does. Wonderful, wonderful memories. So we're gonna get into finished objects. So you might notice I have done my hair, my makeup. I'm, I feel like I'm looking put together, things are great looking fancy maybe, fancy sweater even, worn, but here we go. <laughs> My very first finished object is the brain hat. 
Oh my goodness. I have tried my very best to finish some of my whips. I've been doing quite well on them. I'm trying to see where the two, oh here. This is, this is the front because it's the two hemispheres of the gray matter. Let's, let's talk about this hat. Then I'll put it on for you, okay? We're gonna, we're gonna break the fancy and we're gonna make it silly in a moment. The brain hat was asked for, requested very nicely by a workout girlfriend that I have. Wonderful human, said I really love this brain hat. Do you think you could knit it? Okay, let's, let's give it a whirl. So the brain hat to give you some backstory and some details. This is a hat designed by Alana Noritake. Now the hat design doesn't have particulars. It is a very loose recipe of basically creating a skull cap. You create the skull cap of making the eye cords. You make the eye cords and then basically pinning it on into what you would find of two hemispheres of the brain for the gray matter. So the pattern, free pattern, can't complain, was very loosey-goosey. So it's fine. I'm, I'm up to dabbling in freestyling, so it was interesting. And I feel like it is a yarn sculpture. Like I keep looking at it because I still, I can't believe that this is knit. This is from wool. Um, I used a super wash wool because again, it's for someone that isn't a knitter. So she's gonna chuck it in the wash. Gosh knows, probably not even in a you know lingerie bag, just throw it in. Um, this is the Cascades 220 super wash in a brainy fleshy pink. Um, it took me hardly any time to knit the skull cap underneath. Um, this is just basically a toque that just fits around the head. Um, I did a one by one ribbing. I did have to cast on a number of times because, you know, big, big loose knitter. So we, we've reduced stitches significantly from the original cast on. And uh, we eye corded. We made two very long tubes of eye cord. Um, I might insert some photo here so you get an idea. Um, and that was easy enough. It took a while. It was a little, you know, tedious, um, but portable, which was nice. So I did it sometimes on the TTC in that. Uh, then where I stalled was sewing this on. And for good reason, actually. The sewing it on was highly unpleasurable. Um, first, in the pattern, it suggested that you pin the eye cord down. I think it great idea to get a sense of kind of where you're, how you're going to design your brain and make sure that you have enough eye cord. These things make sense. So I did it for one of the hemispheres and I don't even know which one it was now. And it took forever. It took forever to pin it down and then weaving the tapestry needle in and out of the gray matter to attach it to the skull cap. I was like, there's gotta be an easier way. I'm all about efficiency. One of my very top 10 personal values I know is efficiency. This was not efficient. So what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a kettlebell, like, there we go, bringing in working out and exercise and fitness into yarny ventures. I placed the skull cap onto the kettlebell. The second hemisphere I did not pin down and I freestyled. I placed it and I sewed as I went. This worked much better, I found, because that way I was able to kind of go with the flow. I didn't have to, you know, adjust the pins or get pricked by the pins. And it was one step. The eye cord was beyond long enough. I actually had to rip out some of the eye cord on both sides and bind off again, sew it down again. Um, but we were good. The second side, much better. I, I almost want to say it was like half the time <laughs> of sewing it down. And I think I also kind of got the idea of how to sew it down more, like by coming in almost at the side of the eye cord and through. Um, and key was having it on, resting on the kettlebell so I could put my needle in and out easily because when I was holding it on my lap trying to like watch a show it just did not work. I think this is what I have to say about the brain hat. This will be the only person in my entire life that will ever receive a brain hat. The joy I had out of it was creating the skull cap 
um, is seeing the finished project because I feel like it is art. It's yarn art. Um, I will also experience great joy gifting it to my dear friend. Other than that, this was not a joyous knit. This is a product knit. If you are considering knitting a brain hat for someone, you better love them dearly and they better love you because this is a lot of work. I will put the brain hat on for your pleasure. I think I would use the front as this. There we go. Oh, are we liking it? Oh, there are maybe the two hemispheres here. I mean, this this hurt my brain making it. <laughs> this is the first time I'm putting it on. I I could never wear this. And I know my friend will. She'll she'll wear it out of the house. It's gonna be cozy, man. Like this is this is something. I feel maybe this side might be better for the two hemispheres part. Let's check. Let's see. Oh wow, this is better. Oh, this side. This is this is the side. I'm really gonna use my noggin on this one. All right, well, it's very tactile, gotta say. I, I don't even know if I wanna take it off. But, you know, I did my hair, so that's the brain hat. Next up on the finished objects list, I've classified this as finished, you're gonna see why for the next two things. So the next item is a cowl. Oh wait, she was a hat. Oh, we had some mods. So this has been featured in a number of episodes with you since the day one. I'm talking beginning of July when my bags were packed and we were ready to go on our very first road trip. This was a hat and I was significantly through, I'd say three quarters of the hat. We were looking good. This hat is, before I fail to forget, um, is the Shetland Wool Week 2023 hat. There's a hat that is designed every year and is featured as that year's Shetland Wool Week hat. This is designed by Alice, uh, sorry, Alison uh, Rendell. And I've used the prescribed, I believe, yarn, uh, Jameson 2 Ply, which is a Shetland yarn. Uh, first time doing this style beanie, first time doing a color work beanie, First time using Jameson 2 ply. I was just to cast this on. I bought the colors in the spring. I was considering going to this year's Shetland Wool Week um, and decided against it for a few reasons. So I thought I would get the experience at least through knitting the beanie. And it's really cute because I've seen lots of videos as I was doing my research to see if I had wanted to go. Um, and knitters knit the hat before they attend the festival. Um, or I should say Wool Week, and then they all wear them. It's so lovely. And a lot of the, from what I've seen, a lot of the knitters that attend, they've been attending for years. So they will wear their, you know, that year's beanie, and then they will continue to wear other years of beanies that they've created. So you can literally tell who was at which year of Shell and Wool Week with the design of their hat, which I think is Fabulous. Um, this hat was not sparking the joy anymore. It was ginormous. I was reefing on the yarn for me to try to make it as tight as I could. I was using a two and a half um, US two and a half needle. I do not have any smaller and still ginormous. This was featured in my whips uh, roundup. It was the whip parade. And so many of you from our gorgeous knitting community have reached out to say, make it a cowl. And I did. Um, so what I did is I had to rip back a smidge because I had done some decreases. So I just took it down to where there was no more decreases left. I knit, I think maybe one round of the beige um, as the um, main color. And then I just ribbed ribbed away. I had done my cast off a couple times. I'm again, the loosest, <laughs> loosest knitter in the world. Um, so this is as tight as I could get this cast or um, cast off, sorry, cast on. Um, I also haven't blocked this. So this was, I did a pearl over pearl um, cast off, which I've shared, I think a while back. It's literally all I'm doing 
is purling my first stitch, purling my second stitch, and lifting the second stitch over the first stitch of the right needle to cast off. So it's just purling throughout, um, not following in pattern. And it gives me the tightest cast off and still like, hello, for some reason, we're not as tight as we should be. I have not blocked. I have not done anything with this. I just finished it the other night and there's all kinds of like yarn barf inside because this is gonna also take time to get woven in. So she will get woven in and she will be a gorgeous cowl. I'll, I'll put her on for you. Not mucking up, of course, my uh, red lippy for the holidays. And good thing it's cool here today. <laughs> Although I just came back from a run, so I'm a little, a little toasty if you haven't noticed in my cheeks. And it's windy like crazy. Okay, so there's the cowl. She's super cute. I cannot believe from people watching our, our lovely viewers, this was the way to go. I, I don't even know why it didn't cross my mind to make a cowl. And it was like 100% of the people pretty much was like, make the cowl. It's, it's gonna be gorgeous with my coats. And even if I don't wear it with my coats and even just around the house, if it's a little chilly, like stunning. Oh, it's the first time I'm putting it on. So I'm like, ooh, she's pretty. I love it. I love it. Wonderful idea. So that is the Shetland Bowie 2023 cowl. Maybe the only one that exists. I don't know. But really beautiful design. And I'll have to show up block next time because literally you can feel the, uh, the bumpiness of her. We're going to put that down. That's great. Um, next finished object, and I'm also classifying this as finished, was a TTC cast on. I needed something. I was doing a lot of garments at the time, um, knitting big, heavy sweaters that I just can't tote or don't want to tote on the Subway and Streetcar as I'm bebopping from here to there. So I cast on a hat. <laughs> Because why not? We didn't have enough whips and I needed something mindless. I needed something that I felt success in and you're gonna see why in a moment. Um, so this, I knew I could just bang out. So no no pattern, I just cast it on, gosh, 88 stitches, I think. I think 88 stitches on a US four. This is two stitches of Sandiscar and Alpaca. I think it's a discontinued fuchsia color um, that I picked up on sale. And I just knit until I thought it would be good length. I did decreases, um, four, I should say four decreases um, to get just a really nice little like crisp, not edge, I don't know, round, round top. Um, with uh, knit two togethers and SSKs. SSKs, you can always tell on me because the wheel always have a little extra leg on there. And that's it. I've, uh, I've blocked this one. And I think what I'm going to do is I will take the rolled hem and I think I'm just going to tack it up to get like a nice crisp finish. Yeah, because it's, it's a little too like slouchy, I think for me. I think some people rock the slouch. I, I feel for me, not as much. So if we can imagine, I think it would be like, more like this kind of guy. Yeah, that's cute. That's cuter, I think. And I, I could even wear it like this, like rolled up a little garter or like a reverse stock net. Cute. Anyway, so that's that was the TTC cast on, mindless, and found success in. And that, that is it for the FOs. We're gonna, and I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like, okay, we, we've got some, some things done. So next up is the champagne cardigan. Now this is where we tumble. Um, the champagne cardigan, I had casted on a bit ago. I don't know, three weeks ago, maybe sometime in the month of November. And I'm using yarn cones from Peace Fleece. Um, that I purchased at Harrisville Designs in, where's Harrisville Designs? New Hampshire, I think New Hampshire, United States. And uh, I fell in love with this yarn. It's uh, the Sockland Salmon and it is just a stunner. We've got little blips of like cream, yellow, sometimes like pink and super just, it's my jam. This is my jam. Um, 
and I thought it had to be a cardigan. It had to be the champagne cardigan, cast it on, and as you know, it was ginormous. Um, so I was debating, I ripped out, it was on my Instagram, and I just, you know, feverishly uh, took it all back. We recast it on, and I did six stitches less than the pattern calls for, which I was even debating, is it worth it? But we know that even a few stitches make a big difference. So I cast it on for six stitches less, and I think I'm really happy with the body. I modified everything. Um, I recalculated. So I, I did six stitches less as a cast on, which automatically means you have less stitches in general. And I've reduced the amount of increases. I mean, there's, there's, there's some work. There's some math that was done. Uh, so I assumed, silly, silly non-designer knitter here, um, I assumed that because there were less stitches in general, I'm talking for the sleeve and um, the underarm, I, I can't remember if I cast on or like picked up as many as I was supposed to or not in the pattern. I wasn't following the pattern at this point. Um, so I knit the sleeve. I tried it on and she was big. She was a like a balloony-esque sleeve. And I'm talking even from the get-go, right up here from the shoulder, like a lot of extra fabric. So, of course, rather than being sensible and thinking, okay, let's cut our losses, let's rip back and make it a little more tapered. I was like, no, we'll rib, we'll get the full effect, and then so much we'll make a second one. It's too, it's too big, it's too big. I feel like, am I the only bonkers knitter that does this kind of stuff? I don't know, this is like torture, self-torture. So now where I'm standing, it is a nicely fitted, and maybe I'll pop in a video, um, nicely fitted body of the cardigan. I think I'm really gonna enjoy it by the time I get it blocked and the button band on, but the sleeves are slightly ridiculous. I think I'm gonna tear them out. I haven't yet because I feel for that. I, I need some more, no more knit, knit, knit mojo. Um, and I've been putting my knit mojo into my whips. So that I'm trying to focus on, which is good. Brain hat is getting, getting to the right person for a gift. So yes, this, this is taking the back burner. I really wanted this for Christmas. It's not happening. <clears throat> I've accepted it at this point. I mean, if it does happen, it would be a knitting miracle, but I'm, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I've got other things in place. So that's the champagne cardigan. If you decide to completely recalculate for a different fit, maybe go for a different pattern. <laughs> that was suggested by someone else that watched. Oh my goodness. Okay. This I'm, I'm happy about. I'm happy about my progress. This is a sweater that broke, or is breaking the sweater curse. We can't even say it yet, cause it's not done. She is still a whip. He is still a whip. Um, this is a sweater that I'm freestyling for the love of my life, two stitch raglan, and we are done a sleeve. This is, so look at this, like black on black. Can you see the sleeve? Um, this is knit up using Dory Guard yarn, well, in the sheep's black. And gorgeous yarn, super digging. I have knit the sleeve now twice for the love of my life. The first time, much like the champagne cardigan, he said it was way too voluminous. And I did agree. So ripped it back, redid it, added some more increases. I've got the increases with the little light bulbies and uh, we're good. I actually haven't had him try this on yet. He's been bonkers with work, but hopefully this week, he'll try it on. Um, it's not a big deal. Like I've got, I've got the yarn kind of like still tied on. I can always modify the uh, ribbing if I need to. And we are working on the second sleeve. I'm feeling hope. I'm feeling knitting hope. This will get done for Christmas. This will be my priority. I was kicking out the, uh, the other two finished objects first and we're gonna have this done, no question. I'm confident, not overly confident, like regular confident with it, with good, like good feeling about this. 
So the sweater breaking the soda curse, she's the whip, but she'll get done. Next time we see each other, she'll be done or maybe we're up. Okay, now onto a new cast on. <laughs> what? I haven't finished every single other whip from my whip print video, but yes, this is true. I have a new cast on and I will share why. This is my new cast on. <gasps> okay, hold on. I have to bring it forward to you carefully. Look at the, oh, you can see it. It is my newest and second cinch shrug for the holiday shrug club cowl this is knit using drops air which i have never used before she's here in just their cream and then oh i picked up this this is a gold lame it's um oh my goodness oh my goodness i had it so i have it right over here hold on with the ball band Whoa. And I picked up this the other day. The Lang Lame. It's it's a gold, it's a gold thread, thicker than a thread, I guess, that's um a synthetic. And I've paired it with the smooshy late fuzzy drops air, and it is just coming out exactly how I wanted. This is going to be my Christmas holiday shrug, scent shrug. I'm, I'm jazzed, I'm jazzed. What? It's um, originally, I was going to do something very different. I had many different shrug plans and this this is taking the holiday cake. Um, I feel like it's, it's a little fun and silly with the glitter, but I feel like is hello. If you can't wear glitter uh, during the holidays, when can you? This is the time. Um, so I'm using a US 7 needle. Uh, I've done some mods, of course. So I've done um, eight less stitches, just like I did with my black cinch shrug. And I am increasing one more row than the pattern calls for, the pay pattern. Let's talk about the Holiday Shrug Club cowl because you still have the chance to get on board if you have not. The Holiday Shrug, Club cowl, Holiday Shrug Club Cal is my very first knit along that I'm hosting and I am so happy to be seeing people's progress as they've been casting on and finishing their shrugs. Um, this is a knit along that's featuring four different shrug patterns. You pick one, you pick a number of them, it's up to you. Um, these are patterns from Jackie Rose. There are three patterns that are for free, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday shrug. And then there's one paid for pattern that is the sit shrug. Each shrug um, for the weekend set is basically a big rectangle set on different weights of yarn and just fits over the shoulder as this really fun little element to different outfits. The sin shrug more fitted, little more tapering that goes on at the neck and I feel is just a delight to wear. For me, I've made them more fancy, I feel, in what I was envisioning. So I mean, the, the sparkle, <laughs> she's, she's fancy. It's, it's Holiday Shrug Club cowl up in here, big time. Um, there are prizes. So we've already given one of the lovely participants a prize at the very beginning, and it was a copy of the Cinch Shrug pattern. We have one pattern left to give out as the giveaway. It's the Soho Square by Jackie Rose paid for pattern. And if you choose to participate and hashtag holiday shrug club cow, you may be winning this. In addition, there is a $50 gift card for the Knitting Loft in Toronto. They ship in Canada, they ship in the US um, and have stunning yarns that you just cannot get your hands on anywhere else. Um, so that is the $50 gift card from the Knitting Loft. If you hashtag Holiday Shrug Club Cal in a reel or in a post, um, you will be entered to win. The draw comes um, right in the new year. So the cal has started, but don't worry, 
this can take you, you know, if you want to bang one out, probably a couple days, three days to do over a weekend for yourself or a friend. And um, the cow finishes at the end of the month. We're looking at the 31st of December and I will run a lottery draw for all participants that hashtagged the Holiday Shrug Club cow. I'm so excited about this. And I'm allowed to justify this as my new cast on because it's for the holidays. It's for the cow. And this is a great little travel knit. This is going to be accompanying me for all of my holiday errands. And especially after I get through the increases, which are already here, very simple to do. Um, it's gonna be a mindless, mindless knit. I love it. I love it so much. Holiday Shirt Club Cow. All right. Oh, into acquisitions. Let's do it. Acquisitions. Okay. Yeah. Acquisitions. I have technically one thing ish to share too. Um, I have this guy, a yarn cone. These are my favorite. I love cones. You know, I'm a coney girl. Um, I attended the textile museum of Canada. Sorry, I'm here. Textile Museum of Canada's um, sale. They have a, like a donations day. I've never been in Toronto when this has happened. I was here this year, it just happened a couple days ago on Sunday, and they invite the public in. There's two different viewings of their sale items, or I should say for purchase items, for donation items. These are all fabrics, um, yarns, different things uh, that the textile Ha textile museum has or with their students or their workshops and these are remnants these are you know things that they want to get rid of are I guess in a way de-stashing and I didn't really have a lot of expectation going in it was a completely free event you just walk in and they say yep go on up um, the first round of viewers is members of the museum the second round is non-members so that was me and I perused, there were a lot of like um, sewing books, some knitting books, older of course. Um, nothing was singing to me and they had the show on two floors. Then I got onto the second floor and that's where the magic was. There was so much fabric and some yarn, not lots, some yarn. A lot of like beautifully embroidered like claws and things. And I found cones. There were a few cones actually. So I feel like I was very mature and, you know, keeping keeping calm with yarn purchases. This is Shetland. Um, it's actually not listed, but it was right with all of the Harrisville design wools that they had. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is a Harrisville design Shetland wool. The color is I think it's like a variegated, like light blue white. I was told from two other friends that I was there with, they think it looks purple. Maybe it does on camera. Anyway, I figure if I hang, hang it, if I double it, um, it could be a pretty great DK weight, I think, for like hats, mitts. It's great, it was $10. So I waited when I got home because obviously it was, you know, someone just started using this probably for a weaving project. They do weaving at the museum as well. And it was just shy, like 12 grams off of what was spun onto the cone. These cones, I think, retail in Canada now for like $35, $42. Um, I'm not 100%. They've gone up over time with um, cost of transport. $10. I'm jazzed. Great. Great little find at the Textile Museum of Canada. And I suggest to go because the museum, I've also attended the museum before, is fantastic. Also at the museum, I picked this, <laughs> this up. This is just a little, little simple like sewing project bag that someone's made. It's got a little like tag from the Textile Museum. Donuts are my jam. And uh, I don't have any project bags. So she's gonna be like a little project bag for the Holiday Shrug Club Cow when I'm going along TTC for my little transports, my transport knitting with donuts. I was so happy. I also bought fabric. I'm not going to go through the fabric with you as this is not a sewing channel, um, but I had a great time. I could have spent like the whole day there. Uh, so that was the Textile Museum 
of Canada. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Toronto and winter. We are walking currently to the One of a Kind show. There are two of these shows annually, one in the winter, one in the spring, uh, that come to Toronto. And these are makers, makers from usually across Ontario, sometimes spans throughout the, uh, well, there's mine from Porter, um, spans throughout the country sometimes. I've seen makers from British Columbia, Quebec, and uh, everybody brings their wares. It's a great little time to uh, peruse and see what people are crafting um, and also as gifts. Uh, yes, of course, we believe in the gift knit, but um, for what you can't knit, you can go to the one of a kind show. Um, we're right here and I don't know, oh, it's showing up. It's very, it's very wintry today with the cloud and uh, snow is definitely going to fall from the sky. There's the CN Tower right there and Enerclair Center. This is uh, the exhibition. There's everything going on here. Obviously not right now because it's winter. Uh, this is where our soccer team plays, the uh, Toronto Football Club, TFC. There we are. And uh, yeah, back in the city full on. We've got a little coffee from one of my fave coffee shops, Arvo, right in Liberty Village. And we're ready. We're going to buckle up for one of a kind show 2013 winter time. Here we go. When I went to the one of a kind show, it was on, I believe a Wednesday. So midweek, and because I have the luxury of going during the day now, I went in the afternoon before I was meeting up with a friend for cocktails at night. So I thought I had plenty of time. Um, I ended up spending hours and hours there, not only going through the aisles, talking with the lovely vendors. I did a workshop there. I had no idea. And I feel like usually I've rushed through the show and I really allowed myself to take my time this time. It was lovely, it was great. Um, things that I purchased, I will get into this. So my favorite item I purchased is this. It's a macrame necklace, and this is by a maker in Toronto that goes by uh, Not You, Not Me, like K-N-O-T, and she is fantastic. I really enjoyed the neon, of this and I've already worn it a couple times for sure. Uh, it goes so nicely with blouses, of course, um, but I think I'm gonna get the most wear out of this in the spring. So it's macrame knots. I don't know, macrame, some kind of fancy knot. It's it's simple here, but has enough interest here. And, but just the color, the neon, it, it's, it's doing it for me. So she has workshops that she runs as well in Toronto. So if you find yourself in Toronto and interested, again, it's not you, not me. Uh, the next item I purchased was earrings. These are by a glass designer. Am I allowed to say glass designer? She designs with glass um, from Hamilton. This is in southwestern Ontario, not far from here, about an hour by the name of Alicia, Alicia Niles. I believe her sh like ven vendor, the little shop, she has color love. I'm pretty sure this was her. Um, there was a lot going on in the booth. Um, and if you're into colors, which you might be because you're a knitter. It was it was fun for the guys. I took a little video of that. That was that was a great one. So these are little glass baubles, 
and I like them so much. I bought my mom little glass baubles, like little, um, what are these called? Just the like bloop, studs, stud earrings um, in her favorite color, that kind of like aqua blue, Tiffany blue color. I hope she enjoys them. Uh, next up, I didn't buy anything here, but uh, I have to mention this gorgeous booth of um, cross-stitching, sorry, not embroidered, cross-stitching by Diana Waters. Uh, she goes by Diana Waters Homemade. She is another maker in Toronto that does cross-stitch and sells cross-stitch kits. I was in love. Her booth was phenomenal. So aesthetically pleasing, really interesting. Um, she had ready-mades to show she had kits available. She had this very cool like wooden, I don't, I don't know cross-stitching terms, um, like, like board that she had had laser hold. I am not, I'm not even speaking well, hold by lasers, made hold with lasers, laser beams. And she cross-stitched with actual wool um, onto the wooden board. I actually talked to her about that because I was like, that is very cool. So I want to be in contact with her to find out, will she be making these wooden boards or ordering more from wherever she did? Because I would love to get into cross stitch, but also this big wooden board to have like hosted in your house would be amazing with actual wool. Like we can use our wool scraps to do this. Loved it. Um, so that was Dana Waters Homemade. And the last place that I purchased from is from a very Canadian tried and true cookie company. It is Mary McLeod's. Mary McLeod's is a shortbread company. They were originally from what I know um, in Eastern Toronto. They've since moved. I'm not sure exactly where they are now, Etobicoke, I believe. And they are gorgeous little shortbreads. I bought a few of them. We may have eaten a couple. I will be gifting these. They have um, gluten-free options as well. And I love that it's made here. These cookies are made in Canada, in Toronto, not too far away. And they're a beautiful gift. They're not only delicious, like they're the perfect shortbread that melts in your mouth from probably all that delicious butter, but they're just, such a nice little gift. So I got I got these. These were the last item that I purchased at the one of a kind show, Mary McLeod's from Mary McLeod Shortbread. Just gorgeous. I also believe, so I know, I think they said they're handcrafted. They say it on the box. I have no idea how they do it. It doesn't matter. They're delicious. So Mary McLeod's shortbread. Okay, what am I missing? Oh, <gasps> the treasure from the bookshelf. Let's do it. We are going to grab an item. I'm going to bring you with me because what I want to choose today from the bookshelf. Oh, and if you're seeing, I've got <laughs> all my things that I've thrown over the edge. Um, I'm grabbing from up here. Can you see? So in this area, I don't think this normally shows on the videos. I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna take this guy from here. This is our little like homage to Switzerland up there. So I'm bringing you back over to the couch to get comfy. Are we set? Kind of, I think we're good. Um, so these items, so these are the treasures from the bookshelf that I'm showing today. Um, this is of course the Swiss flag with dust on it and this is a beer coaster so first off this is a swiss flag um if you didn't know it is the only flag i believe in the world that are these dimensions most flags are rectangular swiss is square so quite unique um many things about switzerland are unique um my background with switzerland is that when i was in my second year university i went backpacking with two girlfriends from my hometown and one of the places we went to was Interlock in Switzerland. It took my breath away. I mean, the whole trip, we did six different countries in I think five weeks. It was obviously a trip of a lifetime, especially at that age, like 20, what was I, 20, 21 maybe. Um, but Switzerland was just 
so special to me. The mountains, the lake, the fresh air, the people, it was just, it sang to my heart. The second time that I was in Switzerland, I was running a summer camp. Um, this is at a time when I was taking a leave from teaching. Um, I had left um, public education for one year and I had worked in a private institution for advertising and it didn't sing to my heart. Hindsight, I went back to teaching because I missed the children and the families so much. Um, but for that summer, uh, right before I started teaching again, I went to Switzerland. I was directing a camp in a very affluent, private summer camp that uh, has many stories. I could probably create a whole, a whole uh, episode on that. Um, but it was the first time that I was in Switzerland with the love of my life. He joined me and he ended up working um, in the summer virtually as I was running around at the camp um, with the kids and the staff. So it was a really interesting summer to start and ended so beautifully. We traveled around more of Switzerland and into France. We went to the south of France that summer and oh, so many stories. And we made contact with my exchange student that we became friends um, for years now uh, from grade nine. And so we visited her in St. Tropez. I mean, the stories, the stories. Um, so yeah, there's, there's stories about St. Tropez as well. <laughs> we don't just call it St. Tropez, but I, I'll reveal that in another, in another story tell. I also chose the coaster um, from Switzerland. This is Schwartz Monk, Monk, Monk. Uh, which means black monk. And this is a dark or a black beer from the beautiful mountains of Switzerland. This particularly was in Grimmerwald. We uh, spent some time in Morin, Morin, and it is, it is a whole new world there. We had beer along with other beautiful delicacies of like Alpine cheese and, you know, afternoon bubbles and tea and everything lovely um, in this area of the mountains. So in particular, this is a mountain village in the Bernese Highlands. And this is pretty much a village that is on a cliff of a mountain. Everything, it, it felt like I was in a fairy tale the whole time. Um, wonderful memories of Morin. It might be my very favorite place in Switzerland. Um, it, it's delightful. The people there are lovely. Uh, there's also, so you have to gondola up to Morin um, just to get into the village because it's in the mountain and it's a ski village. So this is their, I think, bread and butter of tourism. Um, if you continue to go up a series of gondola rides, there it's crazy. It's, it's hot. I can't even, I'm terrified of heights. We were staying in the mountains, first of all, like as our accommodation and literally at the side of a cliff. That was already nerve wracking for me and seeing the hang gliders and everything and go down, that's a lot. We went up one day to um, Jungfrau uh, region. Uh, so there's a gondola that brings you up to the highest point, I think accessible to regular people, um, to the Schulthorn. And this is a location that 007, I think in the 60s, the 70s, um, made the village famous um, from the Schulthorn. It's extremely high, the elevation, I don't know how many thousands of meters up it is. Um, it is a scene and it's obviously like it's so high there's no tree line you're past the tree line it is basically snow and rock and the weather changes in two seconds up there uh we also did uh there's another so again series of gondolas up we had to take series of gondolas down there was a midpoint that was like the adventure point of the mountain ah oh, this is a whole story Coming down the series of mountains, we, were we weren't even debating. The love of my life was not um, wanting to do the adventure walk. There's an adventure walk that you can go just, you know, no pay, um, kind of take your life into your own hands. And it is basically a path 
or I should say, I don't know, like a walkway that is metal and attached to the side of the mountain, which is essentially a cliff that goes right down to nothing. Like it, it's, you're in the middle of nowhere and you're in the mountain and it's, there's a drop, a sheer drop. And of course, you know, when I'm on my trips, I want to do all the things. I don't want to have to look back and think, oh, I missed this. Oh, I regret I didn't do this. I don't really have a lot of regrets in my life and I like to take action. So we did the adventure walk and uh, I didn't really understand the severity of the height and how awful it would feel. We walked down a series of stairs, metal, like almost like uh, you would if you were at a ski resort. You know how there's like holes interconnected when you're hitting the ski boots, it makes that clunk, clunk, clunk. So we weren't in ski boots, but so we're going down the stairs and it's not too bad. It's like, okay, you can still see that the mountain is leveling out. So actually if you dropped, which you never could, but if you dropped through the stairs for some reason, you would, it, it wouldn't be that bad. Like it's, there's still land. But as you turn the corner, there's a cliff. It, it drops to nothingness and you can see everything because you, you have, you're exposed. There's metal railings and I think glass, plexiglass maybe to protect you so you don't like fly off and die. Um, you're also on these grates so you can see everything. Even my father's right talking about it. Yeah, the grates, you're seeing right below you. You, you have, like view of everything the wind is picking up because you're on a mountain top and it's just it's crazy uh so i thought okay we can't turn around now the love of my life has already not been keen on this and he's already you know not doing super well um apparently being afraid of heights is a common thing um you know as humans we want to survive and so we press on people are being crazy. They're jumping on the grates, like, no thank you. There's like, um, like metal cording almost, like wire, thick uh, twisted wire that you can walk on, like a tightrope. And then there's like grating on the ground, like, well, not ground, but like hovering in case you fall and you do this, tightrope thing people are doing this there's like also this like hamster not wheel but like walk through crawl through thing it's like literally like a tunnel um of caging that you can crawl through that's hovering over nothing with like hundreds of feet meters down it it's just it was awful even to see these people so at this point i'm panicking because i'm watching this I'm, I'm now understanding the height that we're at and I'm realizing we have to go on. Like we're in the middle of this mountain. If we go back, that's, you know, it's gonna be just as far if we continue to go forward. So it's like, just press forward. So we press forward thinking, okay, it's one way in, one way out. So we get to the other side and I'm about to lose my mind. Like I've never had a breakdown in my life. I was almost about to break down. We get there there's a sign and it's all like crossed off. No, it's closed. The exit is closed. There's a sign in German, French, I think, and English to turn back and exit out where you came from at the entrance. I don't know if there's a time in my life I was more scared. Um, I considered breaking down or I considered running back because I just, couldn't handle it anymore. I was trying to keep my calm, especially for the love of my life. He was doing well, but you could tell he wasn't enjoying himself. And I was like, okay, we're gonna go back. I said, we're not even gonna look back. We're just going to hustle. And we did. We both I, <laughs> were like calling out to each other. You okay? Yep, you okay? Yep. And we just beelined, didn't run, but walked as fast as we could with eyes in front the whole time back to the entranceway going through, you know, the gappy zone, seeing these people do the jumping and the, oh my God. We got to the other side, we got off. I have never been so happy to have my feet be on a mountain before and not beside a mountain. 
that was Switzerland. <laughs> I feel like I painted a very unique picture for you right there. Um, so that was Marin. Marin does have beautiful stories, of course, with it. I just feel that that story so memorable. I, I still feel it in my throat, even talking about that experience of the adventure walk. Um, if you are into adventure, that, that might be the one for you. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Oh my goodness. Okay. Chatty chats. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you wish to comment about the sweater that I've shared, uh, the champagne cardigan and wish to give your two cents on that. I'm very open as I'm going to have it set aside for some while, uh, while I just hang out with those big sleeves. Um, and if you wish to share any of your adventure stories, I'm sure our community would be thrilled to hear. I really appreciate you being here and hope that you enjoyed the knitting content of today and maybe additional stories from the treasures from the bookshelf. If you have, I invite you to like and subscribe to the channel. And in addition, I've set up a Ko-Fi page where you can provide a generous donation if you wish to myself to purchase a coffee for running the channel. Thank you so much and I hope you experience joy in your knitting today. Take care.